This is the Pet Central podcast. Let's make some profits. Welcome to episode 3 of the A to D podcast powered by Petcoza. I am your host Luanelo Poswayo and as always I'm joined by my co-host Keegan Pretorius. Um yeah, Keegan, how's it going today, bro? I'm good, man. Uh no complaints. How are you? Yeah, I'm also I'm also good, bro. Um nothing really to complain about. Um I think today's episode I think the perfect place to start would have to be Mason Mount signing for Manchester United. Um uh, I think the surprising thing that for most people was the fact that they gave him or he chose the number 7 jersey. Um what's your take firstly on his signing and also him taking up that um I feel like it's a prestigious number for Manchester United. Um you know I I have to say I have still have mixed feelings around the signing. Not sure what to make out it of it really. Um mostly confusion but i'm sure um our manager has a plan otherwise i don't think he would have pursued him to that extent and like you said uh the number 7 uh that came that was being offered came to me as a shock as well because i'm part of the core fan base that we, we that number carries some weight and you know there's a history to it so i'm not really sure what to make of it at this time but it's kind of just sit in for me a bit um so yeah mixed feelings all around to be honest um but i do hope that he comes in he succeeds and he does well for now um what's your take on it uh, for me as a as a chelsea fan i was kind of happy like obviously disappointed that uh, mount left especially that he left for manchester united but at least there was a positive for us and for me that's the fact that you gave him such a number um that already means pressure for Mason Mount and to be honest your recent number 7 apart from Ronaldo um recently have have been flops um Alexis Sanchez and Hal to Maria uh Cavani I wouldn't say he was a flop because he was like um aging like he's a, he wasn't all the player but your recent ones even Memphis Depay he wasn't he didn't really uh perform well for Manchester United and when you look at it Mason Mount I don't think that number really suits him to be fair like it, it looks very odd on Mason Mount but I'm not too really I'm not too big on numbers but for Manchester United the number 7 is kind of a big deal um so I'm hoping that <laughs> I'm hoping that he flops I'm hoping that he doesn't start well Manchester United fans get on his back uh I don't wish him the best I don't want to lie um because he's joining a rival if he maybe joined by Munich or like a team abroad uh, or maybe a team like not in England then I'll probably wish him the best I'd hope that he has a good career but as far as him fitting into the Manchester United uh setup or the the formation or Eric Ten Hag's plans I think personally I think he could do well there especially as a number 8 but I'm just not sure where Ten Hag is going to play him so yeah, What do you think about the the price tag? Um I think it's 60 million pounds including the add-ons. Do you think that's worth worth it for for Mount? Um I I would say I was just about happy. I think that for me that would have been the max that I would have gone in terms of price. Um I would have gone just um around 50 million max. but um i guess then i really wanted him so obviously we decided to go a bit over the price and pay the extra five more um with add-ons additional to that so overall i'm still happy with the price i don't think necessarily when you look at it in the long term you know he's 20 24 if i'm not mistaken um and he's a england international um he's been a, well since he came into the first team at chelsea he's been a core piece of that team So when you look at it in terms of value for money I think and also just from a marketing aspect um I do think United will recoup the funds basically um that we paid for him again was I happy that it was yeah 12 months remaining on his contract so but again I get not too fast I'm happy and then in terms of how I see him fitting in with the stylistically and in our system I've seen a lot of news and outlets speaking about how Ten Hag could potentially set him and Bruno as two number 8s with Casemiro sitting deep. So I haven't to be honest I haven't watched him much. So I don't know how you would operate in that number 8 role. 
um, just going off his attributes, you know, his high energy, running around, the pressing. So I, when I look at those elements, I'm, I see where Ten Hag would, where he would work in our system. But then, obviously, um, just to go back to the number as well, you know, the the number seven, I completely agree with you. Like, I just feel it's a bit unnecessary. That pressure, I don't think he really needs that right now. Coming into to our club, um, where we can still trying to figure things out, um, especially, let's say he doesn't have a good start, immediately our fan base is going to turn on him. So, but then again, equally, I look at it as, you know, maybe he has the minerals or the mentality to and the guts to actually take on that number. So, at the same time, you can look at it from that perspective. But overall, um, the signing is slowly setting in on me. It's a bit awkward. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I don't think I've really taken it in. Um, but yeah, um, I hope he ends up being a good signing. And the potential is there for him to be a good signing for us. But like I said, um, I don't think he'll fail. But I, do, I don't think he's going to potentially reach the heights. Um, at, at Man United because again when you look at that number seven uh historically that's a very attacking number for us in terms of just you know numbers in terms of stats goals and assists so like realistically if I could um pose this question to you how much do you think what would be a good target or contributions for Mason Mount in his first season for Man United that would be considered respectable so I would think for me you would have to personally get double figures, so maybe 10 goals, 10, 12 assists. I think then I'll be happy with that. But um, what do you think potentially would be a good, um, you know, number? Uh, that's, a, that's a tricky question because um, I think it depends on where he plays. Um, I remember uh, he had his best season at Chelsea. I think he had 28 um, goals and assists when you put them together. And that's when he was playing mainly as a, in a front three. So when we used to play the 3-4-3 three, three under Thomas Tuchel, he played in the front three. I don't think that's his best position, even though he did get the numbers. So it kind of depends. I'm sure he's not going to play in the front three for Man United. Um, his best position, in my opinion, is uh, at number eight. That's where he played for Derby County. Didn't play a lot at eight for us. I think only Lampard used the three-man midfield at Chelsea. But I feel like... When you look at his attributes and the fact that he he's tenacious, um, he has a lot of energy, he likes to press, he's good on the ball, very decent on the ball. Um, he works hard, man. He's work rate. I feel like he's a, he's the perfect number eight. So yeah, so just I just want to touch on that for for you guys. I think the best thing you can do for him is um, to play as a number eight. So if you play him as a number eight, um, I think. I think 10, is, 10, assists, 10 plus assists, 10 plus goals would be a, a good return for his first season. Um, even less than that, I, I don't think it will be a big deal because Mason Mount does offer more than just goals and assists. That's why managers like Frank Lampard, uh, Thomas Tuchel, Gareth Southgate, they, they always play him, even though sometimes the fans don't agree with the managers. The managers always play him. So he does offer a lot more than assists and goals. So it's a tricky one, and I don't think you should focus a lot on stats, especially if he plays um, at number eight. So, yeah, um, I don't want to talk too much about Mason Mount because there's been a lot of talk in the media. Um, he did say, I think it was today in his interview, he said that he felt like Chelsea were trying to push him out. That's an interesting take because we don't really know what happened, but... If that's the case, then I'm kind of disappointed in my club. Do you think that's true? Do you think we were trying to push him out or like we didn't see him in the future, like for, for Chelsea, in Chelsea's future? Um, yeah, I think just also based off the, the reports that I've kind of seen myself, um, him coming out and stating that Chelsea didn't really see him in their future plans. Um, I mean, it's understandable. I And I guess... Um, when you look at it from his perspective, like he's taking the best decision for himself. And that's why, I don't know. I, again, the signing is still a weird signing for me. I would, have, If you've asked me before the window opened if I would take taken Mason Mount, I, I don't think I would have. But again, this is to the manager. Um, but again, back to your question, 
I, I think Chelsea perhaps did not value him in the same vein that he thought he was valued at, at Chelsea. So, again, just uh, a difference in what each party wants, essentially, at the end of the day. And I'm not mad at it if he decides, okay, cool, that the, the best decision for him might not be for his career, might not just be at Chelsea. And I think that takes a lot of guts. Um, so it's a big move from him himself because um, I've also read in terms of contract offering, um, you guys, t- I think you matched the, the contract um, that we gave him as well. So I think it didn't generally come down to numbers at the end of the day. I think it just came down to what's potentially best for him and his career. So, yeah, unfortunately for Chelsea fans, I know it might be a bit hard one to take. Uh, look, I'm happy to have him, uh, um, albeit by weird circumstances. But at the end of the day, you know, he's still a good player. And I, I, all I can hope is that he does good for us. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, um, one final question when it comes to Manchester United, uh, or when it comes to Mason Mount and Manchester United. Just quickly, do you think Mason Mount will be... A success, yes or no? Mm. Is, I think it's subjective because how are we going to define success? Um, is it going to be in terms of his contributions, um, in terms of numbers, or are we going to look at it in terms of, you know, the eye test, how he wilds he adapts his game in Ten Hag system. So, because I, I think, again, my the fan base, they might, we are split. So, you might, I could make the same um, argument for Anthony, for example. He, although he didn't get the, the goals or the assists for the, the money we spent for him, that's usually traditionally required for spending that amount of money. When I look at it in terms of how he's balanced out the right side of our team and his defensive tracking back, I look at that in a, in a sense of success. So, But just to answer your question, I think underratedly, yes, he's going to be a success. Yeah, well, for me, I hope he, he's not a success. Um, but yeah, that's it for, for Mason Mount. Um, but yeah, we're going to do something different today. We're going to do a Manchester United keep or sell. So we're going to go through the Manchester United squad. And as you all know, Keegan is a huge Manchester United fan. So I'm curious to find out which players you'd want to keep, which players you want to sell. I'm going to start with the goalkeeper. Um, I know he's a free agent at the moment. David De Gea, you are, you are linked with um, Andre Onana. Would you want him to re-sign or is he fine if he leaves the club on a permanent deal? Um, no, I, I need him to go now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, yeah, quick and easy. Uh, what about uh, Tom Heaton? Um, not bad for a third goalkeeper. I think he brings a lot more than um, just being a third goalkeeper for us. I think he's a big figure in the dressing room and he's there to motivate a lot of our players. So I've seen a lot of videos of him and I interact with the rest of the squad. And I know to keep a figure like that. So I'd probably keep him. I'd keep him. This is an interesting one. Um, Dean Henderson. I've just read that we've been quoted that we are potentially close to selling him for around 25 million to 30 million pounds. So especially after what he said against our club, uh, I don't think I'd want a player that no, no, I, I, he needs to go. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. kind of reminds me of um, our situation, uh, Chelsea's situation with uh, Lukaku. So I understand you wanting him to go. Um, yeah, moving to, in, uh, moving to the defence, Victor Lindelof. Um, I think he had, he had an underrated season. Um, I, I just quickly, because I think he gets, unfortunately, he gets paid a lot with Maguire and... Unfortunately, it's brought his stock a lot down. But uh, this season, especially when Martinez was injured, he's came in and he's looked solid for us at the back. And at times, he's played very well. So I'd actually like to keep him this season. I think whether uh, just the, the only issue I have is in terms of him potentially wanting more game time. I don't know if we could give him more, but 
for, I would love to have him as a backup, so I'd love to keep him. Um, I, I think he's a decent defender, uh, especially if he's playing under the, the right manager um, with the correct uh, or suitable defensive setup. Uh, but yeah, anyway, what about um, Eric uh, Eric Bailey? Um, I know he's still at the club. <laughs> oh, no, I, think, <laughs> I thought we sold him. Um, okay, no, he needs to go. Thank you for your service. I just think uh, there was a lot of potential, but just so many injuries and so rash at times. I don't know if you've seen him over the years. Karate kicks galore. He, he always makes a weird tackle, man. And um, there was potential for a player, but I think, um, yeah, it's time to go. I don't think they now great him either. So, yeah. I think I already know your answer to this one. Um, Harry Maguire. Yeah. I, 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 did we skip this one? Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 you know, honestly, I think we, we're going to have a hard time getting him off the books. I've just read um, in terms of the salaries, um, the Man United squad, because we've made Champions League, they've actually got a, uh, a salary bump. So when I look at it now, it's how are we going to get this guy off the books? Uh, I just, and it, it doesn't seem like he wants to let go of his wages as well. So, I mean, I can't blame him, but at the same time, if. Like, if you had any, um, you know, substance about yourself and if you're a proper footballer, I think also the fact that he's the captain of this big club, uh, how are you the captain and your fifth choice? So I just think if, you, if you've had any, you know, balls about himself, like, like make the move. And so, yeah, obviously, you know, my answer, I'd love to see him leave. I, I just don't think it's worked out. And let's just cut our, our losses. Lissandro Martinez. Ah, uh, come on now. Um, unfortunately, another yeah, another obvious. I hate that his season came to an early end. I think if not one of our best players last season and a real leader at the back, an unspoken leader, just with the the way he plays, um, I, I, I would want to see him here for many more years to come. Yeah, so definitely not letting him go. Um, I'm surprised you actually still have him um, in your squad. Alex Tellers. Oh, oh. No, I think he's going to leave. I don't I don't, I don't think he's going to stay on. Uh, Tena doesn't rate him either. Um, a weird Oli signing. I think he came in. He wasn't good. He wasn't bad. He was in between. Just average. Um, I think, yeah, we need to let him go. We need some extra money in the market. So... Hopefully, we, I think we're most likely going to sell, sell him at a loss. We're just not very good at selling. So, yeah, um, thank you for your service and goodbye. <laughs> what about um, Aaron, Aaron Juan Bissaka? Now, see, this is an interesting one. If you had asked me 12 months ago, I would have definitely say, out of the door, thank you, goodbye. But, man, I have to give it up to Ten Hag. Uh, Completely transformed, completely transformed. Even like uh, I think in the the January transfer window, I thought he was leaving. But fair play to him. He came back. Uh, he put his head down. He trained hard, and he came back and fought for his position. And he's he's done very well, I have to say. So I've been very impressed with the turnaround, and he's done so well. In fact, I'd like to keep him this season and, and let him and the low um, just fight it out for that number one spot. So, yeah, I definitely keep him. Yeah, man, a lot of credit has to go for Ten Hag because I also I was, I was impressed with uh, Juan Pesaka, especially um, towards the end of the season. Uh, he looked very good. Um, I think you've already answered Diego Dalo that you wanted to stay. Yeah. He signed a new deal. Um, looking at, at who else is in your defense, Brendan Williams. Oh, no, he needs to go. I don't know if you... <laughs> I don't even seen that drunk video of you. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I haven't. Uh, I haven't. Yes. Um, yeah. I can't remember what, but he was talking a load of... Yeah, but um, he's another one. I think, yeah, we just need to cut our losses. I don't know why he's on the books. So, yeah. Um, thank you for your service. Another Academy product of ours. Um, but, yeah, I'd just like to hopefully see us make some profit off it. 
Last but not least, Champions League, Baran. Um, good season. Good season. Um, he hasn't been as injury prone as he was last the season before um, when he when he came in. Um, I think also the fact that he retired from international football helps us a lot going forward into the new season. So yeah, happy to keep him. I think uh, another quality player for us at the back. So yeah, I, I don't really have any qualms or issues about that. Uh, moving to the midfield, I'll start with Christian Eriksen. You know, this is a tricky one. I think he came in and he did really well for us. But just... He's, he's the only player, one of the only players in our team that can actually pass a ball. So it's a hard question. I just think... He can only give us 45 minutes and then his legs runs out. So it's like you have half a player. It's a tricky one. I'd, I'd keep him this season, but I'd definitely look for a replacement. And I know the club is busy doing that now. So hopefully Mount, uh, Mount has been touted as the replacement for Ericsson in many ways. So yeah, I, I think he gives us, um, in terms of Ericsson, great um Ball playing ability, his vision, the passes you see, no one in our team that can do what he does. But at the same time, we only get it for 45 minutes at a time. And unfortunately, that's not good enough. But yeah, I'd, I'd keep him for the, the next season. Yeah, I think it would be a smart move for you guys to keep him, um, especially that you sign Mount, you're in the Champions League now. So you might he might be a good impact sub or when you want to rotate um, the squad. So I think that would be a good move for you guys to keep him for one more season. Um, I'm really disappointed with how this guy's Manchester United career has gone. Um, Donny van der Beek. Yeah, man. It's, it's, it's just so unfortunate. And how unlucky can you be as a player? Um, and the thing is, he's never been given a fair chance. I've always thought that, um, you know, I would want to see him get, like, a proper run at the team. Yeah. I, I, however, I don't think it's going to happen. I think... I think for best part is just like let's cut ties as well and hopefully he can resurrect what's left of his career. It's just a shame because I had such high hopes for him. Um, again, when he came in, I don't even think that he was a player Oli wanted necessarily. It was more a board signing. And yeah, I would have thought he would have kept more minutes, but unfortunately the injuries as well. So unfortunate situation, but I think, yeah, let's... Um, Good best of luck with him. Yeah, I also feel it's one of those. He's one of those players where I think it's it's it's, it's best for both parties that he leaves because I think he's a decent player. Um, he could make an impact um, in another team or maybe in another league. Um, so um, who's next? Uh, Fred. This is a, another interesting one. I wouldn't actually. I wouldn't be too mad if he, if he left. I think he's a good squad rotation player for us. He's not a first first um, name on the on the team sheet. So I wouldn't be too fast if he left or stayed. Um, at the same time, we do need some squad depth. Um, I'd keep him, but if we got a good offer, I know Fulham's been around him. So if he left, I wouldn't be too upset. So either or in this case. Um, yeah. Scott McTominay. Nah, he needs to go. He needs to go. <laughs> <laughs> as simple I, I as just, that. I just don't know what it is. I, I think it's the passion and desire that the manager see in the training. That like just... Uh, whatever manager comes in, it just seems they, they, they love him. They I, I don't know what it is. I think he's just got that attributes. His physicality, his height, his bold. Um, his bold it's... it's it's a it's a real attraction for the managers that we've had, so I can see why. But I just I I, I don't see what he offers us going forward. He's almost twenty five, twenty six. I'm not mistaken. He's not a young guy anymore. Um, at the same time, he's not consistent enough for me. I feel he'll come in and have a couple of bad games, and he'll have one good game where he does the the, the you know the 
the passion merchant thing and he performs against City or Chelsea and then our fans are like, this is what United is through United. Um, I just don't see it. I think we need better quality in our team. Um, and also, I, I think, especially, let's say, for example, he goes to Newcastle. I think he could do so much better there. I don't even think we're utilizing him correctly because right now we use him as a box-to-box or sometimes we use him as a, a number a number eight or number six even. And those tend to bring out the worst in him. He's not really good under pressure when the ball comes. And his passing can be atrocious at times. So I'd like to see him higher up the pitch. But I just don't think, given the players we already have in those positions, that he'd get that chance. So... I'd like to see him move on. And I think Newcastle, you could be dangerous. So, yeah. Um, the last two, I'm pretty sure you, you're going to want to keep these two. Your captain for last season, Bruno Fernandes, and probably your best player last season, Casemiro. Yeah, I think that's a no-brainer. Um, captain, fantastic. Although, <laughs> he frustrates me. Um, I feel like he just, you know, he just kicks. He doesn't think sometimes. But I think that's the best part. Uh, he has two parts to his game. Uh, that can be frustrating. But at the same time, he's the only player that when the chips are down, he's the only one that drags our team around. And when he's not in a team, you can just see it. It's so evident. So, yeah, man, um, that's our captain. Um, same with Casemiro. Um, I think excellent signing for us. Uh, I'll... I didn't know if you if you asked me, Casemiro was on my list last season. I didn't even think it would be possible to get him, but he's came in, and I think he's proved a lot of people that said he just came for the money. Um, so yeah, very happy to have those two figures in our dressing room, and hopefully we can push on. And especially, he's been very vital and important, especially in the cup, the cup games. So yeah, happy with him too. I also was one of those that thought that. Casemiro just came for the money, um, his last big contract. But yeah, he did prove me and a lot of people wrong. Um, yeah, moving on to to the attackers. I think I'm going to start with the controversial one. And that is Mason Greenwood. I think it's a tricky one. I've seen a lot of opinions. Um, a lot of fans are divided on this. Um Especially, it's, it's sad when you look at in the aspect of he was one of the most talented players coming out of our academy in recent times. But then just in terms of, you know, the things that are attached to him, the, the I just think for me personally, it would be better to cut ties, um, just separate us. Um, and whatever we need to do behind the scenes in terms of setting him up, I don't mind that. I think just assisting, uh, I think... It's very important that we don't just cut him off like that. But at the same time, we have a brand. And, you know, we can't associate certain things with that brand, unfortunately. Um, However, although he's not been proven guilty in court, it is a touchy subject. So I've seen us potentially looking to loan him out. I don't think we are going to let him go at this time. So I think the club in itself, they're kind of just testing the waters just to see what would happen. Um, so he's, he's going, I think most likely he's been going, he's going to go out on loan this season. Um, I wouldn't personally want him back. I think we should just um, end everything. But yeah, it's not unfortunately not up to me. Um, but yeah, if I did, then I'd, I'd have to say, um, yeah, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Martial you know another frustrating one I I don't think a lot of fans would disagree I think uh, you would have to go for me as harsh as it's been I just he's not reliable for us I and it's not his fault I think his body has unfortunately just given up on him and it's sad as sad as it is I just don't think um, we can rely on him. I don't know if, you, if you've known. I don't think he's completed uh, a full 90 minutes for us in the entire season. A full 90. And 
Ten Hag kind of eased him back from his injuries and kind of played him in moderation. But even then, I don't know if you saw when Ten Hag was giving a speech at the end of the season, he pulled a hammy while he was standing. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I think, again, we know I had high hopes for him. He came on the scene, 18-19, exploded. That goal against Liverpool just f- fell in love with him. Um, but he's... Yeah, things just haven't worked out, unfortunately. And again, he's another player with big with big wages. So that's why we've struggled to get him off in the past. But uh, yeah, to answer your question, um, another one that I'll just say goodbye to. Thank you for your service. And but Yeah, if I was in your shoes, I'd also want him um, gone. He kind of reminds me of Jack Wilshire, your Abu Dhabis. Talented player, but like you said, he's not reliable. So, yeah, so I, I agree with you. I feel like you guys should sell him. Another interesting one, um, what about Jaden Sancho? You know, this this has actually been a, a tricky one. Me, personally, I've been so frustrated with him this season. Um, I know a lot of our fans have been kind of coddling him and, you know, no, it's fine, he needs more time, he needs more time. I'm I'm actually close to cutting him off. I think for me, Sancho has until January of next season to show something. <laughs> uh, no, no, I'm being serious. I think he's been here two years. I'd give him off last last season. The early season was a mess. The Ronaldo coming in, um, all those things that happened was a mess. I, I so I completely give it off. But this season, I wanted to see more. I, I think it's so increasingly frustrating when you see a player like that that refuses to take his man on. And then you see, in comparison, a Ganacho that comes on and he's so direct and he runs and he, he, he brings fans up on their feet. So it's been very frustrating. I know at the same time, like we don't have the players in our team to necessarily play his game. We have a mixed bag of players that, Ever stylistically, they don't really work together. But at the same time, like the basics, if I'm not even seeing him tracking back, I'm not seeing him running, showing aggression, then you're not, you don't have enough, you don't have the minerals to just be a Manchester United player for me. So, yeah, I'm on short time with Sancho. I think, yes, one more season for me, but like he needs to show, show something. Otherwise, I think we ship him off um, as hard as it is. I know. What what other play do you know that gets a uh, hiatus uh, for a month, two, three months, and then comes back and still underperforms? So yeah, I I'm I'm not happy with him, but again, uh, he has one more season for me. Yeah, I think he's just one of those players that prove that there is um, this thing that's called Bundesliga tax. Reminds me of Kai Havertz, uh, Timo Werner. They were tearing it up in the Bundesliga, but when it comes to the Premier League, different type of league, a tougher league. Um, he's probably just not made for for the Premier League, which is weird because um, <laughs> he is um, he is English. But yeah, man, I, I, if I was you guys, I would definitely I would definitely want to sell him. Um, Anthony Elanga. That needs to go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, nothing more to say. I hope like Dortmund comes in. I don't know why we we kept him last season. He was supposed to go to Dortmund last summer, but we kept him for squad depth at that point. But he barely played. So yeah, just another. It's it, yes, yes, something. It's just unfortunately, I don't think he's gonna make this team. So yeah, um, all the best to him. Um, you did touch uh, on him. What about Ganacho? No, I think he's our future star boy. <laughs> um, I think a lot of our fans are upset because he was primed for the number seven. And yeah. he himself was kind of, you know, just hinting at it. I don't know if you've seen his post. He broke seven million on, on social media. I'm not sure which platform. But he posted a picture of himself with the number seven at the back. And it says seven million. So he kind of just kind of hinting at it. And he was liking posts where the fans were like complaining why he didn't get the number seven. <laughs> so I know he wants it. And we were all kind of hoping that he would get it. Maybe not. I, I would. I don't think he was ready this season, maybe next season. But um, yeah, Mount's obviously taken that number now. So now I don't know where we go from here, to be honest. <laughs> um, I know you and I have disagreed um, on this player off ear. Um, about whether he was a flop or not, would you keep or sell Anthony? 
No, I'd keep him. I think I'd keep him. I think, you know, we live in this time now of instant gratification. Yeah. Um, he did come in, unfortunately. Um, our negotiating team are not very good at their jobs. So, unfortunately, we ended up spending a lot more than we needed to. Um, but price tag aside, um, I see a lot of potential in him. The, the one frustrating thing is obviously he's very one-sided. You know, the, the coming in and on his left side, it's very one-dimensional, even though it's very Robin-esque in that sense. Yeah. Um, I just, I'd like him to kind of just work on both sides and just kind of, you know, improve that part of his game. But I do think he's going to become a very important player for us um, in the coming season. And so I'd definitely keep him. I, and again, I think, like I said, mentioned earlier, he adds a lot of balance to the, our right-hand side where we haven't had before in a long time. And also defensively, he puts in a shift. He runs a lot. And I think, especially for Tenag, he likes those type of players that are, again, willing to run, you know, do the hard work and on top of that. So, yeah, I'd I, I definitely keep him. I don't know. Do you do you not rate him? Do you not think he was worth the money? Um, I know I always I know I always give him a hard time, but he is he is very young. Um, I think the main reason I give him a hard time is mainly because of his price tag, and that's not his fault. I could do um, the same for Enzo. I could do <laughs> say the same for Enzo. <laughs> yeah, so I think I would definitely keep him. Um, he's he's still young. Um, I'm sure he's going to get better. Um, it's just a price tag for me, and like you said, that he is a bit one-dimensional. But hopefully for you guys, he will get better. Um, so yeah, I think last but not least, Mr. Ballon d'Or himself, Marcus Rashford. I mean, he is signing a new contract, so I, I don't even think this would be a question. Um, you know, again, from last season, I'll, I'll, I'll be the first to say I wanted him out of the door. When PSG came in the summer, I was one of the those fans saying, like, just take whatever it is, because he was so bad last year. He was so bad. He was so bad. Um, and I couldn't have predicted this, you know, upturn in form. I, I, I wouldn't have wished or thought he would have, like, bagged 30 goals this season. So all props to him. Um, again, there's a lot of things in his game that I would still like him to see improve. But all, all in all, I'm just very happy with the season. Very excited to see what he does going forward as well. Um, just quickly, um, on the side, how, seeing as we both have 100 million pound players in our team, how long would you give them before you call them a flop? I think uh, two seasons would be fair because um, you'd give a player the first season to adapt because the Premier League, like we've seen with a lot of players, that it's not really a good season to hit the... It's not really a good... Uh, or uh, I want to say... It's not the best league to hit the, the ground running. So give him the first season to get acclimatized to the new league, new conditions. Uh, in the second season is where I, I think you should start judging a player based on his price tag. Uh, so I think next season is a big season for, for Anthony. Yeah, it's a big season for Anthony. Like you said, Jaden Sancho, he's had his, his two seasons. Maybe you, you wanted to give him the, the first season maybe off. So maybe uh, next season is, hu- is a huge season for him and then you'll, you'll definitely consider him as a flop. I think he already is a flop because I don't think he's going to get any better. So yeah, just to answer your question, simple answer, two seasons. Okay, cool. But I guess you gave Enzo an eight-year contract, so how long? You want to wait four years for him to flop? Before we <laughs> say- <laughs> I, I think, I think um, Enzo Fernandez is not the best example when it comes to this topic because... He, he was one of our best players last season, even though we only signed him in January. I think we're going to see the best of Enzo Fernandez next season under Poch. And especially oh. if we sign, especially if we sign a number six, Caicedo, it's going to give him the freedom because I don't think he's a player that likes to play deep. He wants to play more um, closer to the box. So maybe I think next season you can judge Enzo Fernandez based on his, on his price tag. I think Mudrick is the one that you could... You could be skeptical about. Um, just on Mudrik, I kind of like him. I I really like his profile. He's spicy. 
I, I watched his debut against Liverpool. He looked very exciting. I was kind of very fearful. So I'm glad he's kind of at that dip, you know, where he's, he's just been awful. <laughs> and I, I remember, I'm not sure against which game, but it was at Stamford Bridge where he gets the ball and he's one and one with the keeper and he just skews it wide. <sighs> I don't know if it's a confidence thing with with him or a mentality issue, but he definitely has the talent. So if Poch gets um, gets him on the right track, uh, he's going to be very exciting for you guys. Yeah, I also believe a lot of our players, uh, Chelsea players, I think Poch will have some work to do there. And he is the kind of manager that gets the best out of these young players. And we, we do have a young squad. So I have a lot of faith in Mudrik, Enzo Fernandez, Madueke, so all of these young players that we've signed, maybe not all of them are going to come good, but I feel like a majority of these players are going to are going to do great things, especially under Poch. Uh, so yeah, man, um, uh, I think we've reached the end of this of this podcast. Manchester United squad did take us take a lot of our time, a very decent squad, but I feel like you guys still have uh, a few more areas to sort out: the goalkeeper, the striker. Um, but yeah, we'll talk more about these transfers, um, sell or keep. I think next week we're going to definitely do a Chelsea one. Talk more about the, the Saudi league because I feel like we, we we need to talk about the Saudi league, these transfers definitely. that are going on at the moment. Um, yeah, any last words from you um, before we call it a day? No, I think, uh, yeah, definitely we, the Saudi league and we definitely need to touch on it. Um, they are starting to build some credibility in that league. So, and things are looking exciting on that side. But yeah, I think all in all, um, great show. Um, yeah. Thanks again for, for joining me, Keegan. Um, cheers, bro. Cheers, mate. <laughs>